Amelia Bassin is the ad woman of 1970, and she's brought to Dayton, Ohio, by Kircher Helton and Colette, speaking at the ad club at the Sheraton Dayton. And you know, I want to use the opening line of Nita Pearson from KHNC. Now, if you're a man, you're accepted, and then you prove yourself. But if you're a woman, you have to prove yourself, Absolutely. and then you're accepted. You agree? Absolutely. I certainly do. I certainly do. You have to try harder. You're number two if you're a woman, and you just try harder. But that's good, too. There should be no objection to that. Now, you have your own advertising agency, yes. Bossanova Incorporated. Now, how on earth did you get to be the head of your own agency? <laughs> Very easy. You print releases and business cards and letterheads, and you say, here I am, I'm in business. It really is very easy. But, of course, it took 20 years of working to get to the point where I felt secure enough and well-known enough to be able to do that so that I then, you know, sort of waited. The first thing that happened was that the government asked me to represent the industry behind the Iron Curtain, which was fascinating, just fascinating. And um, I'm involved in very many things. I was with one company for 21 years, and now I'm involved in so many things. It really is just great. Uh, um, well, I think uh, pants certainly are masculine, and I don't understand how men can oppose the midi so strenuously and not object to pants. Pants are much less revealing than a midi, and uh, it's it's very strange, and I don't really think that it's objecting to the midi at all, because they've never objected to evening gowns, which are to the floor or anything else. I think it's a symptom of something that's happening now, and that's consumer's lib. I think that's going to be far stronger than women's lib, because it involves everybody who uses anything or buys anything. And I think that today people are much more aware of advertising and products and being sold things and being conned or being not conned or anything like that. And when the consumer starts feeling the muscles of her purchasing power, you know, watch out. That's what's going to be the important movement, I think. I'm going to ask you a real personal question. Yes. Have you ever wished you were a man? Never, never, never. I never have no. either. You think being a woman, you know, works to your advantage sometimes? Yes, if you don't if you don't do it deliberately. I think it's wonderful being a woman, and certainly uh, if you're working on women's products, it's very helpful, and uh, it's amazing that more men don't feel that way. You see a lot of men working on women's products, especially these, um, I guess they're kind of unmentionable uh, in the feminine hygiene field, and they're all men working. I don't understand that at all. Do you think it's easier to work with women than men or vice versa? I think it depends on the individual. I don't think anyone can make a broad statement. I like working with men. I love it. And I should think that men would love to work with women and women would love to work with men. That's kind of what it's all about. But it does depend upon the women. Some women, I must say, are, are kind of bitter with good reason because they, people have been promoted over their heads and then they know they're just as smart as they are and all that because they're women. But if you let that get to you, it's, it's too bad. You just uh, do what you can. What about the pay scale around the country? You think it's uh, still equal or unequal? No, no. I understand from the government figures that women pay generally is about 40% less than that of men. But I think women would settle for that if they could have the opportunity at those top jobs.